Okay, this video uh, is a follow-up to an earlier video that I've created which demonstrated how to set up a remote in R clone on Microsoft Windows. I apologise to anyone who has been waiting on this video. I hoped to have done it in May, but uh, there has been a slight delay. So this video is going to be uh, about R clone browser. Uh, the original R clone that I demonstrated is operated by command line. But command line isn't for everyone, uh, and this video demonstrates our clone browser, which provides a user interface for our clone for those people who, who don't like to work through a command line interface. The first point to note is that our clone browser is not developed by the same developer as our clone, and you won't find it on the official our clone website, uh, certainly at the time this time anyway. Uh, so our clone browser you can get through GitHub. Uh, which I have open here. There is a video, a link to this um, page in the video description. Um, and it's available for Windows, uh, Linux, you can see with Ubuntu here and macOS as well. And this one we will demonstrate on Windows. Um, an assumption which is made at this time is that you have R clone configured at this moment in time with at least one remote. If you don't have R clone set up on your machine, um, please check out my earlier video, which is linked in the description, uh, where we will download and set up um, a remote in our clone. So for our clone browser, we're going to download this just now. So we go to the releases page, and we will download the 64-bit version for Windows. And I am going to save this to my desktop. And like our clone, it's a, a single compressed folder. There is no application to install. So we just extract that. Now, the first time that you open uh, our clone browser, you will be prompted with a configuration screen. Um, I had it installed already in this machine, but the configuration screen you will see is this one here. And the only value that you have to populate is our clone location. And just point that to the location where you have our clone configured on your local machine and it will automatically pick up the remotes that you have configured. So you can see here that I have G Drive and G Drive Crypt and I will open my Google Drive just now. So my G Drive is um, it's just my Google Drive which is the, the root here and um, my G Drive Crypt is this private stuff folder. And for this demonstration, you can see that both of these directories are empty at this time. So using um, our clone browser is, is very easy. Uh, to open a remote, we simply double click on it. So I've been to G Drive and you can see the private stuff folder and no files. Um, so if I want to upload a file to here, I can do so by clicking on the upload button. Um, on the source, I can pick a file or a folder. So for this example, I'll pick a file. Uh, I'll go to sales data and take the 2017 targets. Say open. Um, copy, move or sync. So these are the same options that are available within our clone. But for now, I'm just going to, to run that. This won't automatic automatically refresh. So if I press refresh, you will see that the targets folder is now available. If I open the Google Drive again, that file is now available there. So if I just go back, um, you can delete folder files from here as well. So I can delete this file. If I go into the private stuff folder um, and upload, you can see the source again. So I can pick um, a file. This time I'll take the job description. And this time you can see in the destination it's going into the private stuff folder and run. Refresh. You can see that's there. Um, and again, if I bring up the Google Drive, 
I uh, deleted that first file. So that first file has gone from the root. And in the private stuff folder, um, we can see that job description. This time I'll remove it from Google Drive. Go back to the root and refresh. You'll see that that file will disappear. It's now gone. So that's fine. This time we will um, transfer a, a file and I'll put this one into the root. Um, so if I go to remotes, open G drive again. Um, upload. Uh, this time we will do a folder. And I'll take the sales data folder just now. Um, and we will press run and go to the jobs tab. You will see that it's running and it gives us a, a running progress as to how that's doing. So that transferred three files in 3.5 seconds there. It went very fast. However, if we were transferring a large file, this would give us a progress bar showing us how long that's taking. Um, so if I go back here um, and refresh this page, you will see the sales data folder is there. I can go into that. And these, those are the files that were in that folder. So I'm going to delete that just now. Go back to our clone um, and refresh. It's fine. So this time we're going to transfer into the, the crypt remote. Um, so if I go to remotes, this time double click into G drive crypt. Now G drive crypt has been configured with private stuff as the root. So anything which we put into the root of G drive crypt will be in the private stuff folder. So if I upload um, this passwords file, those aren't real passwords, but if I upload the passwords file into the G drive crypt folder and run, the file is uploaded, refresh, The passwords file is there. However, because this is our crypt remote, if I go into the private stuff folder on Google Drive, you will see that the, the data is encrypted. And you can't see the data within that file. The same will apply to these contents here. So if I just delete that passwords from here, and upload the sales data folder. This one took a little bit longer so we can see the progress as it goes through there. It's now finished and we will delete the sales data folder from our local machine. Go back to G Drive Crypt, refresh we can now see the passwords file and the sales data folder. We can expand out the sales data folder to see the content in there. But on the Google Drive, we can go into private stuff. Refresh the page. Um, this is a passwords file that we can see there, passwords.txt. This is a file here. And the folder is our sales data. If we tap into there, we can see the three encrypted files. Um, so we're happy that those are on there and they're encrypted. Using our clone browser, we can see the content of each of the files. Or we can continue to use our clone as well um, so we can open the command line rclone. Um, in essence, all rclone browser does is manually enters the commands into rclone for us. And we can download the data from here as well. So sales data, we can download. 
we will stick that onto our desktop. Run. And let's download the password file as well. Download to the desktop. Run. You can see that these files have all been downloaded from the Google Drive. They have been decrypted as they have been downloaded back to the local machine um, and the content is all intact. That is a brief demonstration of our clone browser. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Please also feel free to follow me on Twitter and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.